Okay, good morning everybody. I will talk about flexible distributed checkpoint restart in Kerrigade. This is a French <laughs> way to pronounce it. Uh, okay, so this work is done in the context of two research projects, one French national project, Pitak QCD, and one European project, Extreme OS. Um, okay, so what is Kerrigad? Kerrigad is a single system image operating system cluster, a sy operating system for cluster. So what does it mean? It means that you have the illusion of a virtual SMP computer on top of your cluster. So you can, you have a global view of your process. You can kill it, you can monitor it with PS, with PGREP, with what you want. This is just like a standard lining box. You have global memory, so you have shared memory, IP, shared IPC memory segment. And you can have a process that, uh, that uses more memory than the memory on one node. Uh, we are currently working on node addition and removal. We expect it to have it before the end of the year or before the summer. And there is also application checkpointing. This is the main part of my talk. Um, Kerrigate is implemented as a, as a sm quite big kernel patch, there is also some modules, mainly for scheduling, and a small set of user land tools. Uh, the development version is currently based on Linux 2.6.30. And now, in this development version, Kerrigate is implemented as a lightweight container. Okay, so what is checkpoint restart? Checkpoint restart is the, okay, so a checkpoint is the ability to save the state of a running application on the disk. Then you can restart your application. So you restart your application from your checkpoint and you have exactly the application in the same state as before. But in the meantime, you have perhaps shut down your cluster or shut down your computer or so on. What is it useful? It is useful for fault tolerance because your cluster will not run for every, uh, for, uh, if you have long running jobs, you will have failure on your cluster. And so this can be useful. This is also useful for scheduling because when you, long, when you run long, uh, when you start long running jobs, maybe you will have to stop them because uh, you have some other job to run. Uh, this is useful also for hardware maintenance and for debugging. Okay, so now what are the checkpoint steps? This is common to all checkpointers, all system checkpointers. First, you have to freeze your, your application. Then you, have, then you will dump the data, you will dump the, the process memory, the register and so on, on all the internal state of the application. And finally, you will let your application resume. Well, these steps are needed at kernel level for consistency, because if you checkpoint the process without stopping first the application, your application will not be, you, will, you won't be able to restart it consistently. Uh, okay. But this is used, needed at kernel level, but this is also useful at user level. Why? Because um, the kernel can't do all for you. So, for example, uh, generally, file system is, just, is not saved automatically when you checkpoint your application. That means that you have to do it yourself. So you have to, do, to select the file you want to, ch to copy, for instance, with your checkpoint. So you need, at one moment, to freeze your application, be able to copy the file, for example, and then to let, to really, really uh, checkpoint your application. Um, okay, now at restart, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, so first you restart your application, your application will be restarted frozen, and then you just unfreeze it. So again, it is needed at kernel level for consistency because you can't let some process resume before other process of your application are restored. 
And this is all, but this is also useful at user level. Okay. Now, a simple uh, no. Okay. So, what is an application? Uh, all checkpointers do not have the same uh, concept of application. For all checkpointers, an application is only one process. In Kerrigate, an application is not one process, it's not one process group, it's not a tree of process, but it's a set of process. So, for instance, if you imagine this application, here you have three process, one process, two process, and here you have a multi-threaded process. If this process stops, and those processes are reparented to init, that doesn't mean that they are not in the same application. In Kerrigate, those processes are still seen and as uh, being in the same application. This is generally not the case in other checkpointers. Uh, okay, so you have an application, but an application is just is not only uh, processes; it's also uh, files. You need files for your application. Uh, those files are mainly the terminal, but this can be open files, this can be map files, and so on. And uh, of course, your processes are probably communicating together with pipe, socket, IPC object, and so on. So the limits of an application evolve. Um, during the life of your application. It evolves with fork, with exit, with open, with mmap, and so on. Uh, okay, our first example. So this is an example of an application that reads data from an IPC message queue. So you start your application with the following common line. So you have, if you are in your shell, then it creates some process, maybe a multi-threaded process, and this process will read data from an IPC message queue and will write data uh, in those files. Okay, so before starting your application in Kerrigate, uh, you will need to inform the kernel that it will be an application that will be checkpointable. If you don't do that, oh, we have no way to know that this is an application, and the result, if you don't do that, will be to checkpoint the whole system, and you, won't. you don't want to do that. So, uh, you, just thought, you just added this at the beginning of your command line. Um, unlike BLCR checkpointer, it's not to do some hijacking of your process. In BLCR, for example, there is a similar way to run your application, but the goal is to make your application load some library without knowing it. Uh, okay, so now you want to checkpoint your application. First, you will ask of, for freezing your application. So you identify your application with one PID of the application. Once you have freeze your application and you are sure that nobody, uh, that your application is not reading data from the message queue, you can checkpoint the message queue. So you will save the content of the message queue with the following command. Then uh, perhaps you need to save the, con the content of this file. Maybe not, but maybe you need. So if you need, you will simply maybe copy it by yourself. Once you have done all these preliminary steps, you will be able to checkpoint your application. So here it's just to say, okay, now I checkpoint, and then you say, okay, I can unfreeze. So your application will continue, but you have um, you have a safe checkpoint that you will be able to restart. So now, if for some reason you have rebooted your computer, or I don't know, and you want to restart your application, first you, uh, you copy the file back, you restart the message queue, and then you restart uh, your application. Okay. Uh, now, a uh, much complex application. So, an open MPI application. Uh, okay, this, uh, we are using it for uh, a physical um, computation uh, in quantum chromodynamics in a project. 
Okay. Uh, this is for long running jobs, of course. Okay, so you start your application with MPI run with a host file that says, okay, I want to run my application on this node and on this one. And here is your application. So this is standard uh, OpenMPI. Then uh, in OpenMPI, you have a way to checkpoint your application. So you identify your application with the PID of uh, MPI run. Okay. I just forget to explain how the application is started exactly. Uh, okay, so you run your MPI run, then MPI run will establish SSH communication through the different nodes specified in the host file. Uh, on the other node, some hotted process will be sorted. And uh, then uh, MPI run and hotted will fork and uh, execute uh, your computation process. Then your computation process will uh, discuss together through the MPI layer. So this is more or less sockets, and but probably your process will write on some files. Those files may be shared with MPI run or with Hotted, or maybe not. And there is some pipes open between MPI run and your computation process, and similarly with Hotted. Okay, so. You checkpoint. You ask to checkpoint your um, your application. I will go just go for it. Uh, okay, in uh, OpenMPI, uh, the fact is that M o M OMPI restart is just a wrapper to MPI run. This allows you to restart uh, your OpenMPI application on uh, perhaps more nodes or less nodes than before. So, in fact, the system checkpointer will only be used to checkpoint your computation process. And MPI run, and OpenMPI is uh, responsible to uh, reduce, uh, reopen the sockets and so on. So, okay, um, no, it's not this one. Okay, uh, so for restart, as you as you see, you, you specify again the host, you again specify the number of process, and you identify your checkpoint. Uh, so, in fact, since uh, MPI, OpenMPI creates back uh, the uh, socket communication, you don't have to do it yourself in the checkpointer, and you have to replace it. Uh, you have to get it from... MPI run or on uh, or altered, and you have to replace it. Um, OpenMPI uh, is basically designed. Uh, OpenMPI checkpointer is designed for BLCR system checkpointing at the beginning, and we have tried to make it uh, to have a better interface than BLCR because the uh, interface for file substitution in BLCR is not very good. Uh, okay, so it's fast. It's now time to conclude. Uh, so why is a checkpoint in Kerrygal is flexible? It's flexible because you can checkpoint a set of process. Those process may be multi-threaded or not. Uh, you have freeze and unfreeze like other checkpointer. As I say, it's needed for the user. Uh, in Kerrygate, we are able to save and to restore IPC objects such as message queue in my example, but also shared memory segment or semaphore. Uh, you, can, you are able to save it independently um, because you need the user to know which IPC object to save. From the kernel, you don't know which IPC object are used in your application. Uh, okay, we are able to restart the application in background or even foreground. We are able to do some file substitution at restart, so that means that uh, we are able to relink your application to a new socket. And uh, finally, we are able to do some process group on session ID substitution. Again, it was needed in, uh, in the OpenMPI case. So. And then why uh, the checkpoint restart is distributed in Kerrygate? Simply because Kerrygate is an operating system for cluster. That means that a simple tree of process 
may be distributed over the cluster. So your application can be distributed. And then, but perhaps you also run some uh, application really GDQ, uh, really for clusters such as OpenMPI application, and we are able to checkpoint it. So this is my end of my talk. I have about uh, a few <laughs> seconds. <laughs> if you have perhaps one question, I don't know, uh, or if you have more. Uh, Probably we can discuss at the bar, or, okay? <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, sure. Is it in production or is it in a test farm? Uh, the, the checkpoint restart, you mean, or the, the carry get deployment? Uh, I guess there is some production system at ODF, yes. Uh, can I propose that you uh, meet the speaker next to the, right. next, because here at the lightning talks.